We have with us a very distinguished gentleman, the Sri Lankan High Commissioner to the Court of St. James, His Excellency Dr. Chris Nomanis, who is a medical doctor, educated in Britain, practiced in Britain, and then gave up his medical service to pay the sacrifice of working for his country of birth. Uh, I'm told almost voluntarily because you pay your own way and do the things that you have to do to represent your country in Britain. So may I ask my good friend and brave South Heart Chris Nonis to come and say a few words. Thank you very much, Anirajan uh, Devadithya, Honorable Ministers, uh, Members of Parliament, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to say a few words here today. Uh, as you know, as you know, I lived in London for about 28 years. I was at boarding school here and subsequently at medical school, and then uh, practiced as a doctor within the National Health Service. Overworked, underpaid, it's all true. One in three nights on call. But it really struck me, actually, where, uh, to see what a wonderful system you have in the NHS, and I wouldn't give it up for anything. The wonderful work. <laughs> you know, there are two things that I think are fundamental to serve the people of any country, and that is a free health service and a free education. And I'm happy to say that Sri Lanka has both of those. And I realized the value of it when I worked in the NHS, the wonderful goodwill we had between the doctors, the nurses, the radiographers, the ambulance men, and the police force. You really saw the heart of Britain coming together, especially at every night I served on call at three in the morning after my 20th bleep, having not had dinner or lunch or breakfast. <laughs> but uh, also, what really struck me was the wonderful reservoir of goodwill that all of us in Sri Lanka have with all of you in Britain. We have probably the greatest reservoir of goodwill that Sri Lanka has with any country, and it is because of our previous history. And if you go to even the peripheral areas of Sri Lanka, people still speak a smattering of English and try and learn English. We have one of the highest literacy rates in the whole of Asia. But we also have similar and fundamental values. And this is something that people are unaware of. We have a commitment to rural people. We achieved independence in 1948, but many people don't know that we achieved universal suffrage 17 years prior to independence in 1931. And many people also don't know that we had the world's first female prime minister, two prime ministers before one of your greatest prime ministers, <laughs> Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> And I must admit, throughout my years in England, I was a great fan of Dame Margaret Thatcher, Baroness Thatcher, yeah. because I think she put the great yeah. back into Britain. Yeah. And uh, we, we also had Mrs. Bandaranaike, and then we had so many different people thereafter. But the tragedy for Sri Lanka, like some developing countries, is that we had a 28-year conflict with the terrorists, that was, which lost many, many thousand lives. But thankfully, we achieved peace in the country under the leadership of His Excellency President Mahindra Rajapaksa in May 2009. And finally, all the people of Sri Lanka, Tamil, Muslim, Sinhalese, Burger, Malay, are free of the autocracy and hegemony of terrorism. And if you go, as Niranjan Devaditya, as governor of the Central Bank said, if you look at the statistics of contemporary Sri Lanka, if you look at the economics, we have a GDP growth rate of over 7% quarter on quarter. We're narrowing the fiscal deficit. Uh, we've got historically high end external reserves of $9 billion. Uh, we've got single to mid-digit uh, inflation and interest rates. And also, if you look at the latest sovereign bonds, they've been several times oversubscribed, which is an independent surrogate marker of the confidence in contemporary Sri Lanka. And therein lies an opportunity for Britain, because we have probably the best free trade agreement of any country, that any country has with India. And India, under Prime Minister Modi today, has phenomenal opportunity. So as Britain looks to expand in Asia, the engine of growth, 
we have probably the strongest free trade agreement with India. We also have a free trade agreement with Pakistan. And we've recently had the uh, President of China sign several trade agreements with Sri Lanka. We actually lie at the nexus of the maritime routes between the East and the West. Many people aren't aware that we have, we're just three and a half hours away from Bangkok, from Singapore, from KL, from New Delhi, from Dubai, and from Qatar. I think very few other countries span the Middle East, the South East, and the Far East. And therein lies the opportunity for British business. From a tourist perspective, we don't need to say more. The British and our wonderful British tourists are the second highest source of tourists to Sri Lanka. Yeah, yeah. And for that, we thank you. And I invite you to come again and again and again <laughs> to our wonderful country. I don't need to extol too many of the virtues of it. But I think what is interesting, of course, is the, the opportunities for trade. Now, there we are. This is a, and also IT. <laughs> Might I add? <laughs> Might I add that we have a very good IT industry, as you can see. I couldn't find any of, any of my three phones. <laughs> and on that, note, on that note, we have probably one of the best IT and English literacy rates. And also, the best perinatal and more, um, uh, maternal morbidity and mortality rates throughout Asia from WHO statistics. And many people have asked why. And you know, many people have alluded to a rel um, medicalized population. Some people have, because we don't have a relatively heavy GDP spend. But you know what it's been really attributed to? The literacy rate of rural women. Now, isn't that wonderful? Women, they can read the instructions on the bottles. They can feed the baby. And this is beautiful. And I think these are the same values that we have here in Britain today, the emphasis on healthcare and education. And it's wonderful that such a simple thing as the literacy of rural women and shows our commitment to rural women can have such a profound impact on the population. And I think that's a very wonderful thing. So as we have this very comprehensive reconciliation, rehabilitation, reconstruction program, I think what we should look at is how we can leverage on the goodwill that we have between our two countries. And for that, I think we have to thank all of you because it is not only up to the people of Sri Lanka, it is also up to all of you in the diaspora and all of you, the British people. I mean, it's so wonderful to see so many of you here today at this late evening coming here. And I must thank the three stalwarts of the conservative Friends of, uh, Friends of Sri Lanka, Amal Abe Wadhana, Lionel Amrasinghe, and Rajan York. You all have been working single-handedly, voluntarily, hard at this, and committed no, to, uh, to Sri Lanka and to the conservative cause. And for that, I must applaud you. And I must also thank our wonderful member, members of parliament uh, and, and the governor and everyone else. But I'd also like to say, let's look at what Britain is doing today already. Well, look at Marks and Spencers. They have over 19 supplier factories in Sri Lanka. And the most advanced lead certified factory of Marks and Spencers throughout the world is in Sri Lanka. Look at HSBC. We have call centers out in Sri Lanka. So if any of you, and I'm sure some of you bank with HSBC, at least 10 to 15% of your checks currently are being processed in Sri Lanka. And if you look at the London Stock Exchange, now I, coming from a, both a medical and a business background, have always admired the financial powerhouse that is the London Stock Exchange and its place in global business. Let me tell you that after the London Stock Exchange bought one of our software companies, Millennium IT, Every transaction on the most powerful powerhouse of uh, a financial powers probably in the world today, the London Stock Exchange, every share transaction is run on Sri Lankan software. <laughs> <laughs> so therein lie wonderful opportunities to, for investment, for software, for, the, for industries, and also more importantly, to share the friendship and the wonderful commonality of values that we all, uh, we all share together. And I think it is in that context that I'm delighted to be here today at this late hour to say a few words, to thank all our guests, and to thank all of you, and say, please come to Sri Lanka and let us build on the wonderful reservoir of goodwill that we already have, and all the very best for the Conservative Party Conference. Thank you. Yeah.